Hello, I'm Elizabeth Warburton and welcome to Season 3 of Property Elevator. In Season 2, we saw many property professionals face the angels to try and secure that all-important funding for their property projects. And this year, we're back for more. Now, we've seen over the last year just how important it is to have your money working for you. With inflation rising and bank interest levels at their lowest in years, it's never been more important to put your money to good use. This is why so many people turn to property investing. It's not easy though, you often need both the finance and the knowledge to take that deal over the line. And that's where our angels fly down to help you. In this show, we give property professionals the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property investors. Helen Chorley, John Howard, Paul Mahoney, Ranjan Bhattacharya, and Nicholas Warwork, or who we call our property investment angels. These developers have the chance to walk away with the backing of someone who can bring both the finance and experience to their deal. You're watching Property Elevator. Hi, I'm John Howard. I've been a property developer and investor for 40 years and during that time I've bought and sold in the region of 4,000 properties. My name is Paul Mahoney. I'm a property investor. I also founded Nova Financial Group, which is a property investment advisory company. My name's Helen Chorley. I'm a professional property investor. I'm also a co-founder of the Property Sisters UK community, supporting women and SME developers in the industry. My name is Nicholas Woolwork. I'm an investor, developer and owner of PropertyForum.com and the development brand Redbrick. My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I'm a property entrepreneur, an investor and developer for the last 30 years. If you just come in here with a commercial deal, I'd have, been, I'd have been very interested to do something with you. I'm concerned you've overpaid. I'm concerned when there's seven people bidding for something, as the guys have said, that, that, that you've bought in an inflated market already. What's happening there? You know, why, are, why are people moving to Gainsborough? How much have you spent to date yourself? Goodness me. You better come and do one of mine. Hi, Craig. Hello. How are you feeling today? Oh, good. Slightly nervous, but yeah, ready good. to rock and roll. Don't be nervous. Yeah, that's yeah. what we like to hear. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself and your property experience. Yes, I'm a facility management consultant and I help clients look after um, big corporate buildings. But during COVID, that, that all died a death because yes. none of my clients were using their buildings. They didn't need any maintenance, maintenance. advice. Right, OK. So in the meantime, I used the time to um, study property investment strategies and this is one of the projects I'm coming to talk to them about. How exciting. So have you done any projects in the past or is this going to be yeah, your this first will be deal? Yeah, this will be my sixth um, property. Six. So tell us a little bit about the deal then. Where is it? It's about two miles away from here. It's literally the other side of St Albans. Okay. So it's a three bedroom property on a fantastic plot yep. where it um, expands out. So the garden's huge. And mm -hmm. um, we're looking at putting a double height extension to the left hand side and then a wraparound extension at the back. At the back. So we can then shake it from a three bed up to quite a substantial five bed. Be a good, nice little project, so. Good, well, best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Um, I hope someone takes the deal with you mm -hmm. and I'll chat to you when you get out. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Craig. Right, thanks very much. Cheers. Then. Craig is next on the list to come in. Um, he's looking to purchase a property, I think, at St Albans. Um, come in, Craig. Local to me this time. Yeah. Craig. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for coming in today. Uh, can you tell us a little, about, a little bit about yourself, please, and about the deal that you're looking for funding for? Yeah, sure. Yeah, my name's Craig Shepherd. I live literally two miles away from here, so it's Right, as a local. <laughs> yeah. I'm a facility management consultant, and I normally help um, clients um, maintain their buildings by getting all of the maintenance staff on board. So the M&E maintenance guys, caterers, cleaner security. But during COVID, it all died a death because my clients weren't using any of their buildings. So um, uh, I've then utilised that time to uh, look at uh, a variety of um, property trainings. Um, I may have been on somebody's training course. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> again. Is that, is that John's one? <laughs> well, uh, John and I, we met about a year ago when he was um, promoting his, his books. At, um, yes. At a local networking event. Yes. To host to here. Yes, we yeah. did. So he's we bought did. your book. And it's come on my training course. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> so we've got my, no my chance, book, have we, guys? My book was, no. <laughs> my book was probably plenty enough for him anyway, but we'll see. So tell us about that then. 
So it's literally just on the other side of town. It's a three bedroom property, but it's on an amazing plot. So the garden just gets wider and wider as you, as you go out. Um, we're looking at putting a double height extension to the left hand side of the, the um, building and then putting a, a big extension out, out of the back. So the, the, I'm buying the, the site already. So how much, you, how much are you paying for this property? So it's 850,000 for 850. a three bed um, house in St Albans. Three bedroom semi? Sounds expensive. Yep. It's St Albans. Yeah, <laughs> That's, wow. Prices are just kind of crazy at the moment. For that, for the, this is what we're looking at on screen. That's correct. Eight hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What's the square footage of that? Um, I'm, I think it's about one hundred and ten square meters. Um, but come, an come average semi is about eleven hundred square feet. It's a so. fairly average semi. The road that it's in is a small cul-de-sac, and this this particular property is right at the end of the cul-de-sac, which is why it's got this ex expanding uh, garden at the end. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at spending about one hundred and fifty thousand by putting a sort of a double height extension. Um, the big tree that we we're worried about was the, the one in the back corner there, which is um, uh, over 30 metres tall. So it's quite okay. and, and, and how much square footage or square metreage are you putting? Are you actually putting on about a thousand square metres, a thousand square feet, or something? Yeah, it's about about that. Yeah. So. Okay. So a thousand we're, we're square feet. We're coming in slightly from the front meters. face, um, and we're also yeah. moving the the wall slightly um, across from one of the existing garages, so that we can create a passageway into the back garden but that moves the front corner of the extension away from the root protection area of the tree. What's the end value of all this once you've spent the money? So once we've spent the money, it's, um, I've spoken to four local estate agents to, to get a, yep. a value. I've shown them the plans. They're actually estimating it between uh, 1.2 up to 1.35 million because it will then be a, a very, very substantial be um, five bedroom house. 2,100 square feet or something, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You're buying for 850, you're refurbishing it and you're putting a putting a thousand square foot or hundred square meter extension on and you're selling it for between 1.2 and 1.3 give yeah. or take okay what's the total build cost so the, um, i've had um, estimates of my architect who i've used on a few projects he thinks the actual physical build is going to be about hundred thousand okay. but then we've got to put in things like um, carpets throughout um, when you're developing a house like this you actually mm. have to spend quite a bit on a kitchen yeah yeah it's not a four thousand pound kitchen it's a Fifteen yeah, thousand. So the construction is about a hundred grand, and then yeah. fixtures and fittings. And so we're adding about uh, an estimate of about fifty thousand to cover all of that. But I'm slightly confused. How then you, you're paying around eight hundred ish pounds per square foot, but once it's done, it'll only be six hundred and twenty five pound per square foot. Well, the the, um, the the estimates of the GDV were based on on local estate agents' valuations rather than it doing on a pounds per square foot basis. But, but, but and that's of course, how they value it. Yeah, but to be to be fair to be fair to you, Craig, the, you know, the bigger the bigger the property, the, the lower the square footage. Should, to a point. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I get you. There's dimin and dimin there's a limit, and there's a limit to what a semi. Well, all due, it's still it's still going to be a semi, whatever you do. There's a limit to what a semi's worth in St Albans. Well, that that's it. What that brings to, to my mind is 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 the eight is the eight fifty the right purchase price. Mm. But anyway, you're into it now. So well, on the weekend that the property was open for viewing. Um, on the Monday morning, by the time I rang at 10 o'clock, which was the first time you could actually put a bid in, they already had seven bids, but Craig, three of that, which were at the Craig, asking price. Craig, let me stop you there. Yeah. I told you that. That, that is totally, uh, utterly um, um, irrelevant. Totally irrelevant, because there might be seven, six or seven, seven people who want to buy it to refurbish it and live in. Yes, at, at, that's at, the point. At retail money. Yeah. They're not looking to make a profit. They just want a house to live in. Yes. You, on the other hand, are professional. You've been on Uranjan's commercial course, so you know you you you're meant to be trade. You you're not be, you shouldn't really be mixing with all the all the retail all the punters. Retailers. And if you're bidding and bidding higher than the retail punters, that concerns me. Yeah, mm. that concerns me. No, I was bidding at the same value as uh, nobody exceeded the the asking price, but. Because I can see the development potential on there, and the fact that we can make you know in excess of a quarter million pounds profit, um, yep. that's why it was a more a case of it's okay. a good deal, let's secure it, and then get on and do the development. Okay. I just okay. want to firm up your total costs. So you said about a, you know hundred thousand for the construction, another fifty thousand for the the tart up and the, yep. and the carpets and the fixtures and fittings. So you're at kind of one million there. Yep. You've got stamp legals. What, what's your total GDC? The total cost. Yeah, well, that, that takes it just over to uh, a million and, and thirty thousand with the, the three um, thirty thousand on the stamp duty. I've put in there a contingency of, of fifty thousand pounds, which is quite a substantial. Well, I don't think it is, Craig, and I think you're going to need it. I'll tell you why you're going to need it because 
you haven't allowed for any, according to these figures, unless I'm totally wrong, you've allowed £100 a foot basically to, for the new build, which £100 a foot in today's market in St Albans, in a nice area, you know, expensive area, I'd say £100 a foot is too low for, for new build, which it is new build, okay. yeah. And then you've allowed, on that basis, you've really allowed 50000 for fitting out the kitchens, the bathrooms and everything else. Which high end is still quite Which light. is not, yeah, but you haven't, what have you allowed for the refurbishing the existing house? Mm. Well, that, that's included within that, that 50000 Goodness me. You better come and do one of mine. The internal fit out spec at yeah. over a million yeah. pound property is far higher. Yeah. yeah. The amount you have to spend on the kitchen, particularly the open plan designer kitchens and all of that, this is one of the... Uh, problems with when you kind of go up in value for the property yeah, everything sure. goes is, up you know and there may be certain things like I, I'll tell you something you know if you haven't budgeted for things like underfloor heating throughout on the ground floor people will not be interested in that sort of price point of property whereas in a lower price point property you'll you get, get away, away with, with radiators it, yeah. you are competing with all the, pe the owner occupier people and this point that Helen made is actually spot on if you buy a property at a certain pound per square foot the end value per square foot shouldn't be less per square foot. It doesn't really make sense. Little, and one of the way, the, I mean, the way we all make money in property is to add extra dwellings, add extra units. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. generally speaking, it tends to be a lot more juice in it if you're making extra dwellings. Whereas here, we're just making one dwelling bigger. Yeah. And then I have a problem with the, it's just a row of semis. Is there a natural, I mean, if yeah, I've got the street scene? if I've got mm. one point two million quid, I can probably get a, a small detached house in in the area. And would people want to spend that much? I mean, um, have, are you you're breaching the ceiling massively, aren't you? No, no. I mean, th this whole uh, part of of St Albans, this Mar Marshallswick area, there is massive demand. So this isn't for me. Um, I can see I can see potentially the value of what you're saying. Um, I think you're going to spend a fair bit more on it to get to that. Um, but I wish you all the very best, but it, it's not a deal for me today. Okay, thank you for your time. So how much are you looking for from us and um, what return are you expecting? Yeah, so I'm just looking purely for the development finance for this. So I'm buying, buying the, uh, the place. I'm looking for the 200,000, which is the, the 100 for the bill cost, the 50,000 um, for of 18 and then the 50,000 contingency. Um, so 200,000 to do, to do the works. I could easily go to um, a development finance company, the likes of sort of you know, crowdfunding property ones and, and get something around sort of 10 to 12%. I was actually gonna offer 20% as a return on the investment because I <laughs> want to um, share some of your experience. So mm. that extra percentage for this first particular one is, is to sort of do that. And the thing is, this isn't just about this one project. This whole area in St Albans is an absolute little gold mine. And there are loads and loads of properties like this where there's the space to do, to do this work. So this is partly, this is a pitch to say, this is what we can do. This is the returns we can make. But actually, as soon as we've done this one, we refinance, get the next one and the next one and the next one. So I'm looking not just for investment for this, but a long-term partner. If you just come in here with a commercial deal, <laughs> I'd, have been, I'd have been very interested <laughs> to do something with you. Well, but, uh, <laughs> this is just to keep myself amused because on the commercial side, you know, I've been keeping a close eye following on from the, the training Come course. back in series four <laughs> with one of those then. <laughs> yeah, I think just that most of it's already been said, but I, I think it's probably not a good enough deal on the purchase. You, you are paying retail in competition with people who are emotional buyers and that's why they're so expensive. No, no other reason at all, really, aside from the fact lots of emotional buyers want to live here. Um, and the, I agree with what, what Rajan said as well. You could probably get a house around here, correct me if I'm wrong, but that you could convert into three or four apartments and you'd likely do a lot better out of that. Um, so for those reasons, it's not for me. Okay, thank you for your time. I'm concerned you've overpaid. I'm concerned when there's seven people bidding for something, as the guys have said, that, that, that you've bought in an inflated market already. Um, the risk is also on it kind of the extension of the, if you can do it and return the money definitively in 12 months, given how long refinances are taken at the moment. So 20% return on investment for me over that, over that time frame is just, is not appealing, but I wish you the best of luck. Okay, thank you. I always find myself in these wonderful positions where the other angels have missed a trick. Oh. <laughs> 
Um, I really like you. I think you're excellent. I think you're in, in a great area. I think St Albans is a great area. I grew up in uh, Berkhamsted, which is not far from there. So I know, I know the area very well. It's an area of the, of the country I'd like to get involved in. So you've come at a good time for that. I'm not a fan of the deal for the reasons all the guys stated, to be perfectly honest, but then I wouldn't be risking any money on it because we could do a deal with the development funding mm -hmm. and you're risking your own money doing it anyway because you're buying it. For sure. So if you came for the experience, I could definitely offer that. Um, I've got a shareholding in a company that does land sourcing uh, and uh, back backyard plots, like kind of like this. Um, so we could tap into that prop tech to find more sites in this area. So on the in the pack, on the drawing, when you look at the layout, mm -hmm. at the end of the cul-de-sac, in the following cul-de-sac, there mm -hmm. is an, an ideal backyard, backyard development plot, property yeah. where the back of the garden literally is at the very tip of the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And then that's one where we can look at a direct -to vendor um, opportunity Perfect. to then buy that house, split the garden in half, build a house at the front, assuming that they're willing to sell. Well, that th this prop tech would find all those plots for yeah. you in this area, yeah. and then you could go and approach them. Um, I, I we use Nimbus Maps, but I presume it's very similar. Very situation. similar stuff, yeah. Actually, that is one of the tools that we use in that company. So um, I know we could get lots of plots of this nature and, and, and ideally get them at a better price. So given there's no money at risk on this, um, I'd like to go into business with you on a company level yeah. for everything you do going forward. Excellent. Um, just what sort of percentage would I want to ask you for that? In terms of this particular project or on the, the business and, and this project? You know, so this is our first deal and we'd do as many as we could and, and grow the business substantially. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd effectively be a partner and mentor you on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah, fantastic. So, um, but you'd be running the business. Yeah. Um, I'd be a shareholder, you know, and I'd be prepared to give you the, the control of the company and I'd only want 40% to be your partner. Yeah. So that's my offer. So that's 40% on d the development cost on this one, in terms of- 40% of the profit on this deal. And is share, imagine we you know, co-own a company that owns this property. Yeah. W it would be 40% of any profit. And you know what I would like to do is just to put any profit on this back into the company, just reinvest, just reinvest, yeah. and just build a huge pot and a huge portfolio with it and essentially have you start and run a development company yeah, perfect. Um, and scale it quickly. And I wouldn't be looking to take any money out for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, how, much, how much are you putting into this deal? I don't need to put anything into the deal because it's already funded and we'll reinvest. Right. So it's about bringing a huge amount of expertise to be able to scale your business. I'm not following the offer because um, Craig has got the money to buy the property. Correct. But he, he needs the money for the development finance. Yeah, which we will fund with the, with the debts, easy. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you're, okay, that's what you're So you're going to sort the debt so out? I'll sort the debt out. I'll sort the debt out. I'll get you cheaper debt. Right. we we'll better buy properties, properties cheaper and quicker. Um, He's like Superman, isn't he? Yeah. Hey? And once so, all the costs have been taken out, 40%, 40, 60. Exactly, once all the cost of everything is out, 40, 60 in your favour, and we just grow the business. We'll have a shareholding on that basis and, and all the deals will be done within the company. Excellent. So, as they say in Casablanca, this could be the start of a beautiful relationship. Absolutely. Fantastic. Excellent. Okay, is that a yes? That's a yes. Fantastic. <laughs> well, well done. done. Congratulations. Well done. Well, well done, done. Well done Craig. Amazing. Thank you. Super. Brilliant. Well great done. Great pitch as well. Great excited. pitch. Well, that was a wow. surprise to me. Mm -hmm. That's, you are, that's you how are you got your, that your great deal last series as well. I like these well. little Swoops deals, right? He's got the end. It's fully funded. He's just given me 40% of his profit. <laughs> I don't think it's quite like that. No, no, it's not about that. That's me you, you know, trying to be put, clever with you guys. You've got he's to a put top, your, he's a top bloke. He's got a huge amount of experience. Yes, he has. Nice man. He knows this area extremely well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, and he can find stuff like this. He just yeah. needs to get it a little bit cheaper. I think the problem with this is, yeah, as you say, he's a top bloke, very experienced guy, knowledgeable guy. But he, you're investing in a business, but I think the business is focused on the wrong strategy. I don't, you know, I don't buying, agree. Buying, Listen, I you're not going to get that stock at below market value. You're paying market value for the You stock. will if you go direct to vendor. You, you, we had the same conversation with the last pitch. But of course, there and, is a and you said we go straight to vendor. Why can't you go direct to vendor here? Because direct the, to vendor. To a, a little old lady that doesn't know what she's got. The, with the a big problem, garden. The problem with these sort of stock, unlike commercial stock, 
is that this sort of stock sells very quickly in this area. We just flipped a house actually in this area. Mm. Uh, absolute mess, probate, mm. that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Seven days, we had um, multiple bidders yeah. and there was virtually no discount to it being done up. No. You know, it yeah. was, it yeah. was completely because 30 years, nothing has been but, done but to it, yeah. there's no discount. But that, that is because they can't afford any more. Isn't it? Yes. So the person at 850, they can only go up to 850. So it doesn't matter whether it's whether it's in poor condition or not. Yes. They've got to buy it. Yes. So that's yes. all that's there. Uh, it's all yeah. It's all they've got. So you know, and that's the same. They'll live in it in a poor condition until they can afford to do that's something. That's exactly to it. what this buyer is yeah. doing. Exactly. Well, yeah. When I came in on the taxi this morning, that taxi driver drove me past at least 20 properties like this hmm. that have been split and two or three houses or a block of flats put on the land. St Albans, and this is why it was the perfect time, that's the trick, and this is the taxi driver tip, right? They come from all places. Everyone is doing little backyard plots in, in St Albans, and the council love it. Oh. They absolutely love it. Well, I'm glad you love it. Congratulations. So I'm, in, I'm in it now. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> yep. Well done. Well done. So, Craig, good news or bad news? Actually, excellent news. Amazing. <laughs> so better than expected. Yeah, obviously I was um, pitching just for one development project. Yes, uh, you for were. Development finance, mm -hmm. and I seem to have come out with a brand new company, Amazing. with a new angel. Brilliant. Which one? Uh, Nicholas. So yeah. tell me a little bit more then. What did so he say? Some of the other angels uh, have different priorities. Okay. Um, Ranjan's much more into commercial properties, and he said, if I have a commercial deal in the next series, come back for that. Um, uh, John didn't uh, particularly want the deal. Helen's very um, tight on, on the numbers. Um, but Nicholas came at the end and said, the other angels have missed a trick. Okay. Sorry, because I talked so about this project as an introduction to many more projects. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's a particular gold mine area, um, very local to here in, in St Albans. It is. Where this is a, a quick example of how we can make a lot of money yep. and then go on to, to make more. Great. So, so it was more of the longevity that you were after yes, today. Yes. And that's what you've ended up yeah. with. So I've got an angel as part of my new uh, power team. So huge, fantastic. huge congratulations. Yeah, and wishing much. you lots of success on the deal and hopefully all the more to come. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Craig. Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheers. David, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. It's lovely to be here. You're very, very welcome. Nice Where setting. have you travelled from today? Uh, Nottingham. Okay, and is your deal in Nottingham as well? It isn't, it's in Lincolnshire. Right, so tell us a little bit more about that then. Well, it's a new um, uh, residential development scheme. Okay. It's a uh, virgin site at the moment, it's 1.5 acres. Wow. It has got full planning and the conditions have been discharged, so it's, it's ready even ready to go. Brilliant, and so what are you hoping for today from our angels? As much money as possible, of course. <laughs> Always the best. Yes, yes. <laughs> Is there anyone in particular you'd like to work with on the project? Or? I think looking probably John or Helen would probably be the okay. best fit. I'm not Great. Sure well, but... Helen's yet to get a deal. Yeah. Um, we've got quite a few come through today that have been really exciting projects. Okay. And this one sounds just as exciting. Great. So wishing you lots of luck. Thank you. And we'll have a chat when you get out. Okay. Thank All right. Much. Thanks, yeah. David. We've now got David coming in from, um, he's, well, he's got a deal in Gainsborough, I don't know where, where he's based, but it uh, looks like it's a, a new build. So um, let's get him in. David, thank you very much for coming in to see us today. Could you tell us a bit about yourself and then a bit about the deal, please? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, yes, I'm David Smith. I'm a child surveyor. So um, that's a good start, David. Yeah, uh, I've been in property. Uh, well, I don't like to say, but 40 years plus. Oh. Yep. And uh, this is my um, attempt to get back into property development. I, I was doing it 30 years ago, but I was caught in one of the crashes. And so it's taken a, quite a long time to get back the courage in a way to, uh, to, to get back developing. But this site has come along. Um, it's a 1.5 acre site. It's virgin, it used to be part of the railway, that hence uh, the track next to it. It has been um, surveyed for contaminants and it's clean. It's slightly sloping, 
uh, the, the access slopes up, but it's flat once you get up to the top. And it has got detailed planning consent for 16 dwellings. All the conditions pre-site have been discharged. Have they? So that's, it's, oh, wow. that's very good news. Well so it's uh, oven, oven ready, so to speak. Yep. It's a mixture of uh, dwellings from a three-bedroom detached bungalow, a two-bedroom detached bungalow, eight two-bedroom semis, sorry, the two-bedroom semi-detached bungalows. There's eight semi-detached houses and three three-bedroom detached houses. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, David. If I, if I can, I may start with a question. Why do they love bungalows in Lincolnshire? It's, the same <laughs> it's flat. It, it's flat, I suppose, but they love bungalows. And, yes. and it's amazing. There are, I reckon there is a shortage of bungalows across the UK, yeah. according to the government survey. But I bet you there's no shortage in Lincolnshire. Enough. <laughs> it's amazing. It, it, it really it's, is. It's just anyway. such, such a shame because two stories, twice the value. Well, not twice well, the value, but... You might consider that being rather yeah. greedy, but I don't think that's always the case. <laughs> They're more expensive to build, are they? Would you say that bungalows are more expensive to build in your experience? Per square foot, yes, obviously, yeah. because you've got a roof. Um, yeah, and you've got, got nothing above you, so yeah, they're a bit more but, expensive. Um, mm. yeah. But the values, as you may have noted from the... Yeah. Are, are significant, significant higher. Significant higher, yeah. yeah. No. David, thank you very much for your, for your pitch. Um, wh who would like to start first? Yeah, I've got a few questions. Um, <clears throat> so the number options, there seems to be a few of them. Yes. Um, I assume this is kind of like a low, middle, high type type scenario, is it? Or, or is it different types of development? It's different. The, the, the one that has got detailed consent, I won lots of figures. Right. And the other scheme is the one that um, we are proposing, and that, that, that's the coloured drawings. Right. And just remind me what that the new scheme is, if it's not the original one. Uh, well, we've tried to maximise the higher value properties. Okay, yeah. So we've gone for more three-bedroom detached um, and reduce the semi-detached. Okay. Locally, they say there's a demand for everything. Yes. So it's well, I mean, I was going to ask you what the demand is in... in the, the next question, actually. Sorry. No, that's fine. That's no, no, fine. No. That, that was my next question, though. Keynes are you know, relatively small. Is it town or city? It's a town, a town. it's 20,000 approximately. Um, yeah, it's, it's, what's happening there? You know, what, why, do, why are people moving to Gainsborough? Gainsborough is like a commuter town. It serves Lincoln, Scunthorpe, Doncaster. So it's, um, it's Would a Would you commute to Lincoln from there? Yes, yeah. yeah. The roads are quiet in Lincolnshire. Yeah, they are. How far yeah. is it from Lincoln? It's about 20 odd miles. Yeah. And just to be clear on the numbers, sorry to interrupt, um, the difference is the 2.68 to the 2.85. That's the two different options, is it? Yes. Okay. The, the, there is um, a third option, you uh -huh. may have noticed, which was at the back of the pack. And that is a last minute one, because at uh, last evening, I got the groundwork figures. Yes. And unfortunately, <laughs> they came out a lot higher than I expected. I was told 160,000, and they've come out at half a million. But do you think that half right. a million? But do you think that can be looked at? It can. It, further, that, you that think is they're just estimate. flying a kite, as I call it. Yeah, it's an Trying estimate. Trying to be clever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so the, um, these numbers don't have anything on program works at the back. No, at the back, the ones at the, the back, very yes, back. back. which scuttles most of the profit. The, yeah, the one. Yeah, sorry, exactly. the one. Yeah. 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 None. So do you think this works? No. On that basis? No, not at the moment. But you changed. based your proposal on the 160? Yes. Right. Right. Okay, which, so which, is, which is David, fair, fair enough. Yeah. Until mm. you know any yeah. more, what else can you do? Yeah. yeah. What is, what, what, where's the scope to reduce the price to, 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 bound, to counterbalance that? Is well, there the one variable that isn't fixed, of course, is the land. But exactly. of course, yeah. the owner has expectations. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Reducing those is going to be quite a well. They a need battle. to be. They can be managed, can't they? At the end of the day, David. I mean, if if you can prove, and you're a hugely experienced chart surveyor, I don't know how to tell you this because you, you're far more qualified than I'm ever going to be. But I mean, you you know, you should be a hopefully uh, with your gravitas as well and your experience, and they, I'm sure they trust you. 
they explain that the you know the cost of the groundworks is significantly higher than you that than the budget was, and so there's only one thing that can come down, and that's the price. Um, yeah, I mean, the building costs also were twenty five percent more than we'd envisaged. That's interesting. What was the what? How much of square foot did you think? Well, it would be? we we were eighty thousand a unit. Eighty two, which is I think. what about one hundred and twenty pound yeah. a foot or something? Something like that, and then. It's coming at a hundred and just over a hundred thousand a unit. So uh, average, average of yeah, course. So, so what's that? Still not too bad, is it though? Um, what's the average? What's the average square foot about? Um, the, of the houses. Yeah. That they're about uh, between uh, fifty-seven and seventy-three square meters. So you're about one sixty mm. a foot. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not. So, and that didn't surprise me at the moment. Just to be clear, the building cost doesn't include the foundations that cover, is covered by the groundworks. Gotcha. Okay. And 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 are the are you having to mini pilot or something like that, or what? What? what no, what's their excuse for? Well, so much higher. Well, to be fair, they haven't had the CAD drawings to be able to do a proper a proper significant. Yeah. Okay. So they've just given me an indication. Yes. Okay. And it, it is an adopted road, which doesn't help in terms of cost. Yeah. No. So what's the history of this site? Because uh, you're looking to purchase it. Who actually has got this planning permission? Is it the vendor or have you secured no, it on an the option vendor, or something? the vendor. The vendor has the done it. The vendor's this. had the option, um, had the site since 2016. Okay, so they're and selling it, it with the benefit of the... So they've, they've got all the planning conditions discharged, which is a great thing. Great yeah. thing. But great it's normally thing. something you do when you are planning to build it yourself. I'm just wondering, do you know of why they haven't decided to build this out themselves? Well, I've got a fair guess, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, probably because the profit's 7%. Because I, I'm just wondering the um, uh, the sloping site, because normally at the when you are adjacent to railway lines, it usually is a bit of a slope, and that basically means more groundworks. And I don't know whether it's going to be as much as £500,000, I haven't got a clue, but generally it's very hard to estimate without a one of those level surveys having been done of yes, all the ground yeah. levels and giving it to them and then they can make a proper assessment. Topology yeah. survey. Yes, there has That's been what one. That's called, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but they needed uh, more details. So it's going to be uh, more than what you originally provisioned for, mm. but who knows what, whether it will be sure. as much as that. And um, was the railway company, or, you know, um, what was it called? Train, what not what well, called? Tra Rail Trail, thank you. Were they involved at all? Was they were, yes. So yeah. the vendors bought it from... Well, they, um, I think not directly from uh, rail track. It, it was a private sale again. Right. Okay. Um, uh, but the railway's not there, not in use anymore. Oh yes, it is <laughs> still yeah. in use. Yes, yeah, in fact, just down the road, within a quarter of a mile, there's a station. But is there any kind of because sometimes they have anti-embarrassment or kind of overage clauses? Is there anything like that? No. no. In there. Okay. The only thing we've got to do is give them six weeks' notice before construction, and of course we've got to put an acoustic fence up. Is the acoustic fence in the pricing? Yes. Yeah. Is, is there a plan? So obviously this figure's sort of come to you very recently. So if there's 500 grand being taken out of what looked like an okay deal mm. to make it not look such, such a great deal, do, have you got something in mind as to how you make up that 500 grand to make this work? work? Well, the second scheme, we've reduced the spec. We've gone for more rendering rather than brick um, to try and get some costs back. Uh, obviously, the detail on the, uh, on the drainage and things like that, we'll be looking at to try and get a, a more cost-effective um, route. And I think it's tweaking and sitting down with the um, engineers, etc., to try and tweak wherever we can. How much have you spent to date yourself? Uh, you, not much. You've done a lot of work on it. Just No, the, the, the vendors done all that. Okay, so all of these three schemes, the vendors done uh, all of those? Uh, no, I, I've done the... the so you've done just the uh, spreadsheets, basically? The spreadsheet and the, um, the fly-through, which I hope you've seen. When does the planning lapse? Because normally you get three years uh, to implement the planning. Yeah, next year. So. And are there any conditions to say the site has to just started by that time? Uh, well, normally, if we did the access, well, that would get us. Yeah, that would keep it in perpetuity, hopefully, yeah. won't it? Yeah. Well, some, somehow you have to finish it finish it by a certain day. We had one with a condition on that. Yeah, I a think. Planning that, condition. You had to say I don't think in, by a certain I day. I don't think in Lincolnshire that's the issue. <laughs> no, you it no, is you're in, probably right. It is in some of the flash areas you develop in. Yeah. Um, okay.
Like so it's a bit of a tricky one, uh, David, isn't it, really? I mean, what, what puts me off more than, I mean, the price, yeah, of course, you know, it's a negotiation, isn't it? And, and, and uh, you know, they need to wake up and smell the coffee. <laughs> if it's, you know, they know that, they obviously know the same problem you know, you can't be hidden. So at the end of the day, they either got to reduce the price or, or do it themselves or, or let it sit there. So I think by the sound of things, they're commercial. So at least they're commercial. So on that basis, some deal probably could be could be cobbled together. My 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 worry, and I know people don't worry about it as much as they used to, is the railway line. I'm not keen on on developing near railway lines. Now I know there are some train spotters who are very very keen, and uh, I, I, it always astonishes me how you can sell a a railway cottage on a on a railway line at a level crossing with the with the lights going and flashing, and there's still someone who'll buy it. Yeah, it amazes me. Yeah. Just shows you there's something for every, a property for everyone, you know, or vice I versa. I think Ranjan's taken enough stick today, John. To be fair, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I, I do I do agree. I think the railway line is a, is a big problem. Um, ha, have your comparables taken into account the railway line? Because I've seen one letter from an, an estate agent. Yes, yeah, so the, the the estate agent was aware of the site. So, yeah, so they're yeah. they're happy that that's. I, you know, I think you'll probably get close to those values. I mean, I don't know the area, but I'm assuming you'll get close to those values. I think it might take a lot longer to sell, so you have to factor that in perhaps on the finance. They're not going to just fly off the shelf like they would in a, a slightly um, people, I less have to contentious say, people, location. Nicholas, people are less worried about that sort of thing as they used to be. You think? Um, I, think yeah, I, 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 I would have I thought do. the opposite. I, like I think in a location sensitive. like this, though, there's plenty of space not next to railway lines. Yeah, you that's know, a good I, point. I live Paul. in Zone 2 London this is next it. to a railway line, but it's 10 minutes to the city. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas a reason this for is it, a vast yeah. area. Yeah. Mm. So that, yeah, that would be a bit that of a is the well. issue. much more open area, and why the, why would you then want to be next to a railway line? You will sell mm. them. You'll want to be next to a railway line because the price of the equivalent property is cheaper than something that isn't. Yeah. And you're getting on, so that yeah it has to be priced to in, doesn't me. it? Exactly. Yeah, has to be because the GDV is maybe on the lower end. Yeah. Of for comparables in that area, Spot on. similar types of properties, plus with the groundwork complications, which are I mean, obviously, it's much easier to uh, build on um, flat ground. The other thing that I wanted to ask you is that sometimes, or many times, when you build close to railway lines, um, part of the planning permission is dependent on putting some kind of sound barrier yes, uh, in, in between the housing and the... Is that, yeah, and that's been costed that's in here costed as well. In, yeah, okay. the, uh, yeah. And what about windows? Well, we're thinking triple, triple glazing, triple glazing. Yeah. Yeah. on the front anyway. You and that's all priced in? Uh, yes, you can get the aeroplane glass, can't you? That's um, really good for that. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, shall we? Um... I, I wonder if you, if there's a deal to be done. So I've got a friend um, who basically only does this type of thing, and how he structures deals. There's there's always an overage in it, but that takes an awful lot of negotiation and yes. you know almost kind of education sometimes of the vendor and you know I don't know kind of how astute probably quite astute your vendor is do you think is that an option you could explore here it, it is yes he, because, he is a developer so right okay okay I mean his excuse is it's he's based in Nottingham as I am and um, he said it's too far because he's it's got red it's got red flag that old, all over that old chestnut. Yeah, this yeah. is the thing when, <laughs> and when you when you find somebody clued up like this who had the land. I, I looked at a really similar deal, to be honest, down south, probably a year or two ago, and there was a super savvy vendor, and basically they'd extracted the juice, and it has that same feeling to me of this. That's why I've, the only way to proceed with it, as I see, would be to get some type of overage and you split the risk. But he's probably too savvy to go for that. Mm. Um, yeah, obviously that there's potential saving in the purchase price but the most concerning thing for me is even if you half the purchase price the profit is still only 15 percent so it's mm. still not enough to make it yeah, work it's a small um you're obviously i, I assume it's not it's not going to be possible to half the purchase price but maybe you make some savings elsewhere either way it's just very hard to see it work i agree well look i i think i think david um let me tell you where well you know where i am anyway and I'm sure the rest will follow uh, one way or the other. Um, I like you very much, and I, I'm frustrated that you haven't come in with a better deal, to be honest with well, you, because I you're know. you're very investable. You're you know you've got the experience. You're a chartered surveyor. 
you tick a lot of boxes. And um, I think together we could, you know, we could do something. So, uh, uh, pers for me, this isn't a deal for, for, for a number of reasons which, which we've discussed. However, I would really like you to keep in touch with me. And if you have anything else uh, that you think is um, a, a deal, then I'd be delighted to, to come and look at it for you, with you. And if you and if you like to come back on the next show, we, we, I think we'd be the producer and ourselves would be delighted to to see you here again. Um, oh, thank you very that's much. That's for sure. Thank you. This is quite typically my kind of of, of deal. Um, with that said, I've got some ongoing challenges with some deals at the moment, and I know the problem, it, 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 it honestly it doesn't surprise me that that the numbers came back in so much higher on the groundworks, just because everything that I've been investing with so far, <laughs> the costs and the numbers have gone one way and yeah. the time frame on these things have gone one way. So not only is kind of the return very tight, as Paul has said, but the time frame on these things, and I'm sure you could manage that really well. But um, for me, I've got enough exposure to, to this type of stuff at the moment. And um, yeah, just too tight with those numbers, yeah. unless an overage could be agreed. Okay, thank you. Yeah, for me, it's just, um, it's got sort of, like I said, red flag written all over it. If a developer that's bought it can't make it work, mm. I don't think, you know, I'm not, you know, he, he might have missed something, but the chance are he's not. Um, you've gone through enough due diligence to probably find out why he's not built it. Um, and that is the reason I wouldn't want to be investing in this. I don't want to be the third person to make the same mistake. <laughs> um, and the railway, I think, is a big issue. I'd be worried about building anything with a with a railway there. You don't know how if there's mainline trains there. You know, it's just it's going to rule out a section of the market. And I'd rather have the whole market there as an end buyer. Um, and I'm sure there's land out there where you could do that kind of deal instead. So it's just not a good enough deal. You're for worried me, about it going off track. <laughs> yes, very exactly. good. Oh, very boom. good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> They're not getting any better. <laughs> yeah. Ranjan. Oh dear me, enough has been said, I think. I, I think the numbers just don't work. Uh, but what I'd recommend to you is that you watch this. Uh, because this is not an owner-occupier deal, obviously, so no one's going to fall in love with it. Everyone's dealing with the same spreadsheet numbers, and it doesn't work because the purchase price is too high. And this guy is on a, you know, the sand is in the egg timer, and there ain't that much sand left, because he's got one year. And he's discharged all his conditions, he's had two years on the planning, He's, he's grappled with the same issues. And what I'm saying is that as we get into this last year, um, he is thinking that, well, okay, am I really expecting or can I really achieve that purchase price? So this is something to keep in contact with him. And you may actually pick this up for nearer to what you need to pick it up mm. for later on. Yeah. But you certainly won't pick it up in the next month. Yeah, thank you. Paul? Yeah, just, you know. Agree with everything everybody said, uh, especially what John said. You know, I think I think we'd make a good team. You know, your experience, my youth, tenacity, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> money. <laughs> um, I think I, don't I, I would. You, I don't would, you just hate him? Did he <laughs> did? I've for, got you. Don't and say money, that. And you don't have. You know, do you know, <laughs> I just say that's, that's not what I was saying. Can I just say pictures? He normally mentions Paul. good looks as well, so we got away with that one. <laughs> No, well, I'm saying I think we would make a good team and I'd love to work with you. So I'd love to keep in touch. But obviously this deal doesn't work. Uh, thank, okay. you, thank you. David, uh, thank you so much for coming in today. And as I said, please either come back, come back in on the next series or, or contact one of us or all of us if you, if you can sort this deal out. OK, thank Super. you very much for your comment. Thank you. I'm not being disrespectful to him, but he's an old fashioned chartered surveyor. And the, you don't see many of them left anymore. You know, it's experienced, qualified. Most of them now have to go around ticking down boxes on a mortgage application. You know, <laughs> he's an old fashioned, proper charter surveyor that you used to be able to rely on. And you don't see that many left. He reminds me of a friend of mine who's exactly that. And yeah. he's a very smart guy. Yeah, um, yeah, so nice man. For that reason, I think he would have been good if yeah. he had a good deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he's, never mind. He's got the skills to do a deal. Yeah, he's just, just picked the, unfortunately, he's just got the wrong first deal. Wrong the time and wrong, and wrong timing with yeah. what material prices yeah, are, exactly. you know, as well as. Yeah. Well, that could be why the quote's so high. Yeah. It's just the timing yeah. and they've just priced in 30% yeah, exactly. more. Yeah, Because that might not come online for another six or 12 Well, months. exactly, you don't know, do you? So, no. I hate yeah. to say it. Look, he's a, he is a qualified guy, chartered surveyor, but I'm very surprised 
he brought to us a deal with so little meat on the bone. Mm. Uh, there wasn't just an, enough in it. And I think not to see the groundworks issue uh, on a sloping site with that much I'd experience. Yeah, but he, he, he got, he got out to the quote, and the quote only just, has only just come in, Ranj, so, Ranjan. So I think you're being a little bit hard there. But it's three times what he expected. It's not, it's not a, you know, 10% here or there. It's He's no. pretty much factored in the price in the, in the original estimation yeah. for a flat site. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, um, on to the next mm. for him and us, I think. <laughs> So David, tell us how it went. Well, to be honest, uh, as expected. Okay. Um, last evening I got a bit of a shock, which has affected my figures. Right. The, um, the ground cost came out at a lot higher, a lot higher than I expected. Than you expected, right, yeah. okay. So the, the angels picked up on that, obviously. Uh, the figures aren't lying. <laughs> mm -hmm. In this instance, I didn't try and beef it up. It's yeah. the truth. And, yep. uh, uh, obviously, it's not of interest because it's, the returns aren't as good as expected. Okay, so what's the next step then? Well, it's to go back to the vendor because the only thing that can actually move is the, uh, the purchase price. price yeah. Okay, so you're yeah. going to try and go for lower? Of course, yes. So that'll be the conversation first thing in the morning? Yep, I'll be on to it. <laughs> well, I hope it goes really well. Okay. Um, and I hope that, yeah, you get a good price and you can continue with the deal, make it a success. Okay, I'll try. I'll Thanks try. a lot for coming today. It's been great having you. Thank you very much for having me. Bye -bye. Well, we can't deny the standards of today's pitches. There's been some amazing opportunities and some that haven't quite worked out for our investors today. But we'll see you next time on Property Elevator.